Hello everyone. Welcome to Marvel Medicine. My name is Suheb Chaudhry. This next lecture is on Tetralogy of Fallot. They love questions about Tetralogy of Fallot. So let's start off with what it is. Tetra means four. So that's four things you need to remember about it. Number one, pulmonary stenosis. Number two, right ventricular hypertrophy. Number three, overriding aorta. Number four, ventricular septal defect or VSD. What I want you to do is just imagine and picture the direction of blood flow in this heart with those four defects in mind. You know the direction of the blood normally goes. Now let's take a look at this. First thing, pulmonary stenosis. So imagine the pulmonary artery is narrowed. What does that mean? It's harder for the right ventricle to pump blood to the lungs. What do we know about muscles that work hard? They hypertrophy, right? They get bigger, which leads us to the second thing you need to remember, right ventricular hypertrophy. Now, there are two reasons why this would happen. First is the stenosis causing the ventricle to work harder. And second, which is the ventricular septal defect, which just happens to be the third thing. So now, picture the big right ventricle and a defect where with each contraction in systole, blood is going from the left ventricle to the right ventricle and then back to the lungs over and over. The last thing you need to remember is the overriding aorta. How do I imagine this? I know that normally the aorta leaves the left ventricle and the right ventricle has the PA, the pulmonary artery, but imagine the aorta that sits right in the middle and imagine blood from both right and left ventricles going into the aorta. On a side note, what can we say about the oxygenation of blood in the aorta with the patient of with Tetralogy of Fallot? It's probably less than normal, right? Less than 100. Why? It's because of this overriding aorta where the blood from both ventricles is mixed. The deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle mixes with the oxygenated blood from the right, uh, from the left ventricle. Also keep in mind the VSD, where the blood is mixing as well. So now, I want you to take all four of these things and just picture the blood flow blood coming from the right atrium to the right ventricle and having a hard time going to the pulmonary artery. And imagine the VSD with blood going from the left ventricle to the right. And imagine the ventricle, the right side, hypertrophy. Now we can move on to talk about what a TET spell is. They love uh, asking questions on this stuff. This is where the child who has tetralogy flow will become cyanotic. But why? It's because of the pulmonary stenosis or some increase in right ventricular afterload. Let's say coughing. What does it uh, make? Um, is it, It's much harder for blood to go to the lungs. Well, where does it go instead? Remember that overriding aorta, that's where it goes. All that deoxygenated blood, uh, you know, from the right ventricle will go straight to the aorta to the rest of your body instead of going to the lungs to get oxygenated. So what do kids with TET spells do to make them feel better? You have to understand what the problem is. Too much blood going through the aorta and not enough going through the pulmonary artery. Let's increase the aorta's afterload. By increasing this, the blood in the ventricles will be less likely to want to go to the aorta but will want to instead go to the pulmonary artery. This means more blood to the lungs, which means more oxygenation and feeling better. They're less blue. The US only loves vignettes where the patient has tetralogy flow and they describe a TET spell. They won't just tell you, oh, the patient's having a TET spell. No, they'll say, oh, well, this is what the patient looks like. They'll show you a picture of a blue, a blue child, or they'll describe a patient cyanotic. Then they ask, what maneuver will help? Well, according to what we just kind of learned, we know that increasing the aorta's afterload will help. So what do we know that does that? Squatting. Let's incorporate pharmacology. 
What drug could we give that would increase the aorta's afterload? An alpha-1 vasoconstrictor, right? Such as phenylephrine. So if they give you a typical patient with tetralogy for low and was in a TET spell, then asked which of these medica medications would help you, you would pick phenylephrine.